Hi there, Visionary family, and welcome back to another one with Lady Visionary. Hope you guys are doing amazing as always. If you're new to my channel, please make sure you go ahead and smash on that red subscribe button and become part of this growing family here on YouTube. We have hit 6K subscribers, guys, and I am so, so, so excited. Like, you guys don't understand. I'm so excited and very, very appreciative of all my subscribers, both like the, the ones that have been with me for the longest of times and have followed my journey, even from when I was in the UK to now being in Rwanda. So I just wanna thank you so, so much. And also the new subscribers because I've had quite a lot of new sub subbies. And um, yeah, I just wanna say thank you guys so, so much. I really, really do appreciate all the love and support. Before we jump into it, um, I just want to let you guys know that I do offer consultations for anybody who is interested in relocating or doing business here in Rwanda. You've got myself who's here on the ground, who has, who is very much informed. And yeah, so we can set up a Zoom consultation. And that usually lasts for about an hour. All you have to do is send me a, an email send me an email. All the details are down below in the description bar in every single, um, under every single video, um, whether it is a live or whether it is a usual upload. So you can go ahead and send me an email if that's something that you may be interested in. Um, I want to let you know, just a little disclaimer, that um, the consultations are charged, but they're very, very inexpensive. I've made it very, very inexpensive so that more of you guys can you know, afford it and gain all the information um, that you need with regards to your relocation and business journey here in Rwanda. So with that being said, if you're not following me on, if you're not following me on Instagram, go over and follow me on Instagram. My name over there is lady underscore visionary. I also have a business um, Instagram as well, which is Twin Lakes Recreational Island. So do go ahead and support me over there just by, um, yeah, just by following me guys, just by following, you know, um, I know I asked for you guys to share my videos, you know, make sure you're commenting, engaging with my videos, making sure, um, you know, like every time I'm live as well, just kind of being interactive. Why do I ask that? Because um, that's just a way to help my channel gain exposure and for more people to know about what exactly I'm doing here in Rwanda, why I've relocated and the whole journey. And hopefully it will also inspire others out there who have kind of been a little bit narrow minded, perhaps, or, you know, I've always wanted to travel to the continent always wanted to explore the continent, but maybe they have been afraid to do so, or um, they've always been putting it off, right? Because remember, like a lot of us are stuck in the rat race of Europe or um, the Americas, you know. I was once at that place where I was just on the rat race, you know, um, just, you know, you're just running and running and running and you're not, not really enjoying my life to the fullest. Um, you know, always kind of chasing money in the West, you know, you know, it was just, it was just a lot. And, and then one day I kind of stopped and, and thought about it. And I was like, this, I don't want my life to be like this. I don't want to be constantly on that whole treadmill. We're just tied in a system. You know, you, you, you work, eat, you die. That's it. You know, so I wanted um, I wanted more. And definitely from my childhood years, I realized that I was very much a very different child. I think my my parents also realized I was a very, very um, a different child um, in that. I just I just always questioned a lot of things. Um, I always asked a lot. Of, um, I, I always asked why, 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 why? And um, definitely I was asking my question my, myself a lot of questions in the UK. Um, I just wasn't happy with that lifestyle, just getting up, going to work. I just felt that there was more to me, you know. And, you know, right now I'm in Rwanda and I'm really walking in my purpose, really um, doing the things that I imagined that I would be doing, right, and even beyond that. So, and and that feels amazing to be walking in your purpose, to to be doing what you were born to do. 
And um, I definitely believe that my place is right here on the motherland. And so I can't explain how fulfilling, yeah, that's the word, how fulfilling it feels um, for me being here on the motherland. Like I didn't always know that it would be Rwanda, if I'm honest, because my first visit to the continent back in 2010 was Ghana. And Ghana still holds um, a place in my heart, very much so. Ghana holds a massive place in my heart because that's where like my whole journey began. Um, I spent about three months, yeah, spent about three months in Ghana initially. I was in Accra, Kumasi. I traveled to the Brongapu region for all my Ghanaians out there. I went to a place called Kasapin, Goso, you like, you know, and I was learning tree, etisane, you know, brasa. Like I was really immersing myself in the Ghanaian culture, the food, like the people, like, you know, and even now, I have quite a number of Ghanaian friends who I met at that time who are still my friends until this day. So, yeah, Ghana really helped shape my whole mind, my, my whole outlook on life. And I was like, I was kind of like this girl or this, this young woman who was just like, Dad, I want this, I want that, you know. And Ghana, the experience in Ghana really humbled me on another level, it really humbled me. And, um, yeah, it just really humbled me, like seriously, seriously humbled me. And it changed my prospects with regards to life. And going to Ghana was also um, about identity, because I guess I was like, you know, thinking a lot about my identity and questioning a lot about my identity, um, coming from Jamaica and things like that. And, you know, being brought up in a household where we weren't really taught about African history. So, I had to pretty much, <laughs> I asked a lot of questions and I had to pretty much go out there and find the answers for myself. So going to Ghana was part of that journey of discovering more about myself, who I am, my, my direction in life. And yeah, and Ghana, yeah, as I said, Ghana shaped me, um, changed me <laughs> um, and kind of, you know, um, yeah, directed me with regards to what my purpose is in life and which was amazing because also when I got back from the UK um sorry when I got back from Ghana to the UK I just kept thinking about Ghana actually I kept going back like no I spent I think I spent about two years or, or so two years um let's just let's have a think guys yeah I spent about three years um in in the west before going back to Ghana when I was doing like a master's research project um, I was doing a master's research project with Kolobu Hospital. For those of you guys who don't know, my background is in healthcare. So I was doing a master's research project with Kolobu Hospital in Accra. Again, met some amazing people who I'm still with, I'm still friends with today. Um, yeah, and I and I I think I've went back at least like two or three times, yeah. Like in all, I've been to Ghana like four times each time. My first time I spent three months and then the other times I spent at least a month. Like every time I was coming to Africa, I was just like always, it has to be like three weeks to a month. Like I just felt like one or two weeks just wasn't enough. And um, even when I started to come to Rwanda, like my first time in Rwanda, I spent like a whole month, you know. And at that time I was even doing my master's as well. And I took the time like whilst I was in Rwanda, I also traveled to Uganda. I took the bus to from Rwanda to Uganda, which was very interesting. Maybe I'll do that in a story time or something. But um, yeah, like um, I visited Uganda during that period and I was like, oh my God, like I'm just so excited to be here. I couldn't even concentrate on my master's assignments, but I had to get them done. I had to separate myself from everybody when they were having fun. And I was like, guys, I've got to buckle down because I'm not about to fail this master's. And I didn't fail, guys. I actually did really, really well. I did really, really well in my master's program at King's College University in London, um, one of the top universities in the whole of the UK. So, um, yeah, like that really shaped me. And I was um, um, as I, when I was in the when, when I was back in um, England, I always kept thinking about my purpose, what I was born to do. Um, I knew that the, the West was not it for me because I felt like very much uncomfortable, although I loved my profession, being a physiotherapist and um, being um, 
being a healthcare professional, because I'm like I'm pretty much a yeah, I, I'm a care, I'm a caregiver, I'm a carer. So um, you know, I pretty much li like my profession um and what I was doing, but at the same time, <laughs> um yeah, I just knew that that space in Europe was not gonna be where I was gonna like spend the rest of my life. Hell no, like hell no. Like it was just stress upon stress you know obviously the systematic racism institutionalized racism you know as you try to as I tried to progress in my career there were so many stumbling blocks and I believe that was mainly because of my skin color right but nevertheless because I'm someone who believes that just because my skin is black I still gotta work hard I still gotta push down these boundaries um, and and so I and so I did in many cases, but it was just it was just tiring. If I should be honest, it was just tiring. Always kind of um, like just that constant battle of of fighting and proving yourself, even though you have the experience. You know, you've also gone to the um, university like your white counterparts, but still you were being questioned and undermined. And I I really. I was very analytical with regards to why I was thinking, well, is it something that, you know, is it you? Like I really internalized it and said, you know, is it you? And I was, you know, nobody's perfect. And I'm someone who um, has always been flexible and willing to learn. Um, but when I really um, dissected it and pulled things apart, a lot of the times it was coming down to, I just believe this is because of the color of my skin. Cause I've always been um, a quite humble person. I listen, I take um, constructive feedback and criticism. And, you know, I'll always try to improve myself. So, you know, as I said, the constant um, fight was tiring, tiring, tiring. I'm like, you know what? I don't have to do this. Like, you know, being in that system, you feel like your life is controlled by someone else, you know? and dictated to you in a like how things should be but here here on the continent um there's so many opportunities for growth so many opportunities for investment so many opportunities for you to live out your best life and make a lasting impact and so that's what i believe my purpose um my purpose is to make a lasting impact my purpose is to influence my purpose is to um, direct, you know, give information and transform, you know, transform the way that we think in terms of, right, you know, there's there's no life outside of Europe or outside of America. I mean, I'm here in Africa and I am living, right? I am living, like, I'm not, like, I always say this and I'll say this again, People probably tired, like, Lady Visionary, this is like a broken record. But seriously, like, yeah, I mean, it's not, like, I've been so used to living in Europe for the last, what, 20 plus years. I'm not going to give away my age now, guys. It was my birthday in September. But anyway, um, so what was I saying? Um, so, yeah, like, with regards to the West, yeah, I knew that. That wasn't going to be for me. And as I said, like so many people feel like, um, as I said, yeah, I was saying there's no life outside of Europe and America. And I'm here. Yes, that's what I'll say. Um, and I lost my trail of thought. You know, like it's just amazing because nothing is smooth sailing. Nothing is smooth sailing. Like you always, I've realized in my life, like, and, I've, and I wrote a blog about this guys, I wish I'm gonna share, like I used to, before YouTube, I was definitely a content creator. Creator, I love to write, I had a blog, I still have a blog, which I just share my thoughts and, and put my ideas together. And again, it was all about inspiring people to think outside the box. Like we're, we're locked in a system that, that um, doesn't want us to think um, outside of that system, outside of that box, you know? And I'm like, far greater than that. I'm far greater than that. And so, you know, breaking outside the box and finally like letting go of that life and be like, right, um, 
go into the motherland and I believe I can make it and I know that it won't come without its challenges. It hasn't come without its challenges. It's not been smooth sailing, but I know that, you know, if I put in the work now, which I am, I'm putting in the work this, despite any challenges that I may face because I believe that in the end, I'm going to win anyway, regardless. So I'm putting in the work. Obviously, there, there are challenges such as, I don't know, there'll be people obviously that doubt you. You know, sometimes you may even doubt yourself. Like I may even doubt myself when I'm having like specific challenges, like, oh my God, this is so hard. Like this is, this is, this is, this is a lot, you know, um, you know, again, um, issues around maybe language barrier, because, um, you know, here in Rwanda, they only like the main language is Kinyarwanda. Only a few years they, they move from French to English. And, you know, that's still sort of ongoing. A lot of um, improvements need to be done there. But also I'm learning the language as well. But the more that I'm here, the more I immerse myself in the culture, you know, trying to communicate with the people and getting down to their level, the more I feel a part of, you know, the more I'm like, right, this, you know, I feel more at home. And the random people in general, they are very um, warm, very welcoming. They make you feel like, you know, like they can adapt to you as part of the family. And you're like, oh, my God, this is a lot. But like they, they, they're just um, very, very warm and welcoming. And, you know, when you go around to their house, they want to feed you. Even when you're full, you're like your plate, like you've had like seconds and thirds and the, the food is still coming. And you're like, oh, my God. And um, I know there's there's something about, well, if someone is feeding you here, I, I don't know. I think it's maybe the same in some other African cultures. But here in Rwanda, when, you know, they're giving you food, you know, it's kind of like rude to say no. So you just have to be like, try and take it, take it, take it. But yes. Um, but yeah, yeah. Very, very. The people are lovely. The people are accommodating. And so far, you know, like so far, so good. I know even like I'm going to touch on this just a little bit, like because right right now we're in a time where, I mean, a lot of there's the the diaspora movement. So a lot of us are coming to the motherland. People are choosing the different places which they would like to relocate to. And I chose Rwanda. Even there's some people like, oh, you know, you shouldn't be promoting Rwanda. I'm promoting Rwanda. Like I'm I'm promoting Africa in general, you know. Um, so like maybe people have their particular issues with Rwanda. Like for me, like, I am just fascinated with how much progress Rwanda has made. I've never, ever made out that Rwanda is perf a perfect country. But tell me what country in the world is perfect. Tell me what government is perfect. You know what I mean? Tell me what person is perfect. But what, what we're trying to do right now is we're trying to build. We're trying to um, move from that state where Africa has just been like in desolate, African people being, um, you know, the, the influence, the psychological brainwash amongst um, um, Africans by the West and all the superpowers that's caused a lot of um, ongoing problems even today on the continent. Um, um, Rwanda has also been a victim of that, you know. Um, so I'm all about... Um, um, I'm all about promoting progress in Africa in general, but I happen to be um, here in Rwanda. So, of course, I'm going to um, promote Rwanda. Um, I'm not being paid to do this. I'm not being paid if, if, you know, people out there thinking, oh, she's being paid to do this. Uh, I wish I was being paid to do this, but, yeah, I'm not. I'm not being paid to do this. And also, um, it's something I'm passionate about. So even though, like, right now on YouTube, being a small YouTuber, I don't get much really, I don't get, seriously, I don't get much, but I keep on doing what I do because I have a passion, I have a vision, and I believe that there will be progress in Africa, and I'm making a contribution, like, hate, and, like, hate doesn't do anything, hate has never done anything, so people telling me, oh, you know, this, and this, and this, about Rwanda, th like, hate has never done anything, if you're gonna, like, if you're gonna be anything, be a positive person, be, be someone who thinks, how can I make a contribution to the development of Rwanda? Like the Rwandan people have been through so much. It was only recently that, you know, um, 1994, the genocide and everything like that. So, 
you know, and people are still hurting. When you're on the ground here, you will know that, you know, people are still hurting. We're just making the best out of everything. And, you know, um, there's a lot of work going into reconciliation and forgiveness and things like that. So we, we want to continue to move Rwanda forward, you know. We want to continue to um, be a part of the, the amazing and tremendous progress that Rwanda has made to date. Not saying again, Rwanda is perfect. There's still a lot of challenges here on the ground, but there are plans and policies in place to help move, continue to help move Rwanda um, um, forward. And with the diaspora coming, with our money, with our skills, with, with everything that we have, all our resources, we can make a difference on the continent. We can also make a difference here in Rwanda. So no, I won't stop promoting Africa. I won't stop promoting Rwanda because I wanna see progress in Africa. That is part of my purpose. And I will continue doing so until the day I leave this earth. So yeah, guys, um, if you haven't already done so, make sure you smash on that like button. Make sure you um, have subscribed if you haven't already done so. This is the 6K celebration live, 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 live with Lady Visionary is alive in the flesh. I've got my drink here, guys. I've got my drink. I've got my drink. I've got my drink. So make sure you've got something. I've got my drink here. It's something I did myself. <laughs> but yeah, guys, um, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much, each and every one of you guys who have just poured out love. Like, as I said, like this year has been extremely challenging for me. But, you know, regardless, I just keep pushing, I keep working. You know, I keep pushing, I keep working, right? And that's what it's all about. I'm a person who, in general, overall, I'm someone who, I have, like, this go-getter mindset. And I also have this mindset of never give up. Overall, I do have that mindset of never give up. Um... Yeah, I've just always been that type of person who just, yeah, just just keeps on pushing forward, um, keep on trying to move forward. And before I used to beat myself up if I didn't achieve something in my life, but then there was something, I think it was a book that I was reading, and just through my journey, I realized that, you know, it's not about beating yourself up. Like, if you, if you fail at something, it's not the end of the world. Like, you do have an opportunity to get it right next time. And so that's pretty much how I am. If I don't do well at something at a particular point in my life, I don't just like throw the towel in and be like, oh, you know what, I'm a failure. No, I just sit back and just analyze the whole thing and see um, and look at it and see what can I do to improve in this area so that I can be better or so, so that I can win at one, what I need to win at or how, um, what can I do to achieve th those specific goals? So guys, I'm going to give you an opportunity to come in and talk to me. I'm going to send out the, the link so you can come in and talk to me. If you have any questions that you want to ask me, I'm only on here for an hour, guys. I'm only on here for an hour. So make sure you have your glass of wine, I don't know, champagne, your juice, your water, whatever it is that you drink. Let's raise your, let's, let's have you have something to drink, guys. Make sure you've got something to drink. So um, let me see who do we have in the chat. And then I'm going to send out the link for any of you guys who want to who want to just come in and add something to the conversation. I would really love to hear from you. So stick around. Um, yeah, let me see who we've got in the building. Guys, remember, you know, um, this 6K celebration, super chats are accepted, right? If you want to make a contribution, you know that the, the dollar sign there um, is there so you can um, give us a super chat to support everything I'm doing. You can also support via PayPal. The details are running across the screen. And also, every time, all the information about how you can support what I'm doing here in Rwanda is down below in the description bar um, attached to every single video. So we have anointed praise in the building, um, anointed praise saying, Lady Visionary, congratulations on reaching 6K subscribers. Thank you so much. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Joyce Boggs is in the building. Congratulations on 6,000. Thank you so much. Knowledge is power. I uh, saying congratulations. I'm a new follower of yours. Thank you. Hope you're going to enjoy, you know, this channel, the content. Man of Dreams is in the building. Um, knowledge is power. Saying love your hair. Thank you so much. Like this morning I got up and I was supposed to go to the hairdressers. And then I was like, you know what? I don't feel like having anybody on my head today. Like, not today. Let me just try and do something myself. And then the easiest thing I could think of was like to just do Bantu knots. And so that's what I did. It took me about what? An hour to do it. Yeah, it took me about an hour. But yes, I did it myself. Thank you so much, Nana Dreams. Wow. Oh, that is nice. I'm um, Honeycomb 368A is in the building. Peace and blessings. Congratulations on. Um, your 6k thank you so much I know it's more than it's more than that guys it's more than that but I really do appreciate like the, the the goal the vision is bigger than that but you know at this moment in time um I really do appreciate everything I really do appreciate because I'm someone who believes that if you can't if you can't appreciate the little things in life then you'll never be able to achieve the big things and that's pretty much yeah how I think so I appreciate my 6k subscribers my 6k supporters should I say who just um helped me to just keep going because you know I'm not probably as consistent on YouTube um because I'm also doing so many things behind the scenes that I don't even showcase on here but you guys will get to see it like in due course you know I think everything will be revealed at the right time Okay, everything will be revealed at the right time. Um, okay, who do we have in the building? Shara Madden is in the building um, saying, yes, uh, please do a story time on Uganda. Yeah, I, I wrote a blog on, on that. So maybe I'm going to share that in my community um, tab for those of you guys who may be interested in, in that um, blog, actually. Pretty interesting one. One way travel is saying, hey, oh, thank you so much. You know, as I said, I did it myself. Um, honeycomb 368A, I spent over 25 years in healthcare and I completely understand. We're brilliant and need to turn our energies towards our own. Exactly. I felt like, you know, you have a lot of brain drain coming from Africa to Europe and the West. And it's about time, like, we started to, filtrate from the West and the Americas back into the motherland where we belong and give our best to Africa. You know, give our best to Africa because I feel like definitely um, that's what the ancestors would like. That's what the ancestors definitely want because when they left by force, they didn't know how, like, you know, how maybe they thought, generations after generations how would you know we get back to the motherland and it's happening it's happening because I'm here and I'm not going, going anywhere I'm not going back to the west right I'm not going back to the west so I'm here to stay I'm here I'm, I'm a permanent fixture in the motherland <laughs> so as much as they yeah I do like obviously I have my family and friends in, in the West that I miss, of course, I love and miss dearly. But my purpose is here. You know, my purpose is here. And purpose is far greater than anything else. So, and I'm just complete, I'm like overly blessed, I think, because I expressed that to my husband very, very earlier on in our courting or dating stages. And, um, you know, we're, we're pretty, we like God has pretty much aligned me <laughs> with my husband for a reason. So yeah, we, we're a team. We're a team and yeah, we, we, we're working together in building this legacy that we'll leave behind for a lifetime. Um, um, anointed praise saying, pleasant greetings, everyone. 
anointed pray, pr uh, prayer, sorry. No matter where you live in the world, there will be different challenges and struggles. Yes, many people are struggling here in the US, in the UK and around the world, yes. So yeah, I, I, yeah, as I said, you know, wherever you go, you will have your challenges, um, you know, moving from, as I said, for me, moving from the UK, having spent so many of my years there, uh, even though like the transit, like because I've been coming to the continent for so long, like making a final decision to relocate here and to just be here was not like difficult. But as I said, like everyday challenges such as, um, I don't know, maybe the culture or the language and things like that. And just fully immersing yourself here can be a challenge for a lot of us. And yeah, like wherever you are in the world, you will have your, your um, individual um, challenges in that space. But for me, I'd rather have my challenges here on the motherland. I'd rather have my challenges here on the motherland. I'm choosing my battle, and I'm choosing my battles on the motherland, right? Um, I'm here to make a contribution. I'm here to make a lasting impact, right? And this is what I believe our ancestors want for us to come home. Um, one way, it's getting harder to adjust here, though, because of vaccine mandatory <laughs> mandates in Kigali. Wow, 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 wow. I hear you. I hear you. That's a uh, concern of quite a few people. Anointed prayers. For example, some jobs here in the U.S. pay very well, but you may live in a city or area where rent is very expensive. Therefore, the homeless population is growing around the country here in the, the U.S. Yes. Well, you know, what I found... Um, in the in the West was like, you know, the more you worked hard um, towards a particular um, threshold, towards a particular point where you feel like, oh my God, yeah, I'll be very very comfortable there. Then you find that when you when you're nearing that threshold, th the threshold starts to move, and so it's constantly like this. It's this that's co that's constant stress that I felt like, hell no, I don't need this. I need to get out of this this system, this rat race. I need to do something different. I need to own my life because a lot of us in the Americas and in the West, we don't own our lives. We don't own our lives. That We're not operating with that level of consciousness and we're being operated by other people. And for me, it's like, that's no way to live. That's no way to live. I need to get out of that system. I need to get that out of my system because it's contributing to my ill health, right? Is it Zeno Yoga? Is it inspiring? Thank you. You're most welcome. Thank you for joining us. Anointed prayers. There's a saying here in the US that many people who work on a job um, are one or two paychecks away from being homeless due to the fact that they don't have a large saving to help them in emergencies. Yeah, so one of the things I, I studied like a bit about the black community, um, both in the UK and, and in the US, a lot of the black community, they have a lot of liabilities and they own very few assets. There's a, the, the, the black community lacks financial literacy and, you know, are even uh, li highly likely to be homeless because of, um, you know, lack of financial literacy and, you know, just, just increasing liabilities. Always wanted to look good, but you ain't got no money in the bank. But you always want to look good, you know. So um, it's just there needs to be a shift with regards to that. Um, and, and that's going to really transform our lives once we we operate with a level of consciousness, reduce our liabilities and start to own assets, 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 assets. And this is one of the things that a lot of organizations have studied and they know how to manipulate the black community psychologically to get money out of our pockets and keep us poor, keep us homeless, keep us not progressing to greatness because we have that potential and they see it. So what they do they try to do? They put things in place to keep us suppressed. Okay, so I'm seeing quite a lot of you guys in the building. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, wow, um, okay. Um, anointed Pro saying, Lady Visionary, the Bantu knots look beautiful on you. You're wearing 
it very well. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. I felt like somewhere like a bit lopsided, but anyway, <laughs> thank you so much. Um, Deno Yoga is saying, I, uh, I too am a new subscriber. Congrats to you. Thank you so much for being here. Hopefully you will enjoy the journey. Thank you. Joyce Haskin is saying, hi, Kerry Ann. I finally caught you on live. I love your work. The information you bring is absolutely necessary for us, for us who are planning and coming to the motherland. Thank you so much. I'm so happy that, you know, um, you find this channel informative and useful. That's what it's about. And also when I get comments like this, it's very, very encouraging because it helps me know that what I'm doing is positive and a lot of people are gaining and benefiting from it. And yeah, it, it helps me or it, it inspires me to just keep on going. Because as I said, it's not easy, you know, continuously trying to create content and just trying to make sure that I'm also sustainable here on the continent as well. Like it's a bit, I'm pulling, you know, I'm always like pulled in different directions, but I do enjoy what I do here on YouTube. I do um, enjoy providing you guys great content. And I hope that my content will improve um, as we go along. So bear with me, guys. I do, ex uh, I do plan on expanding and, cr and creating and giving you guys better content, right? So thank you so much, Joyce, for yeah, the encouraging words there. Uh, Mish, Mish is saying, congratulations, Lady Visionary. Much love and blessings. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here, being here. Titus is in the building. Congratulations, Lady Visionary. What has been the biggest change that has happened in your life since relocating to the motherland? Mm, the biggest change. That's a great one. Ah, oh, like I would say just like um, like stress. Like stress was a major issue, I think, for us in like, well, okay, let me say for me in the West. And um, when I was in the West, I, I was really kind of um, questioning, like, am I going to be able to, like, I don't feel fulfilled in the West. I wasn't feeling fulfilled. And that was making me very, very stressed, you know, and just my mind was just clogged up with so many thoughts and feelings. And so being here on the motherland, um, all of that is just, it's like a, a heavy weight lifted off my shoulders. And I'm able to think clearly. I'm able to see the vision clearly. And I'm able to just run with the vision. And so what I'm doing now, a lot of my work is towards, um, is focused towards um, the things that I need to achieve um, with regards to my, my goals and vision and purpose. So that's been a major, 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 major life change for, for me. You know, um, yeah, that's been the major life change hopefully that answers your question yeah i can i can see clearly now the rain has gone <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah guys it's, it's true um yeah all the obstacles i mean even yes i do face obstacles here but yeah a lot of the obstacles that i was facing in the west that was suppressing my hopes dream, dreams and purposes purpose in life like that's all shifted out the way and i can see clearly now so, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm working towards the things that I want to achieve here in the motherland. Um, yeah. Um, Regman Music is in the building. Congratulations, my sister at Lady Visionary. Thank you so much. Thank you, Regman Music. I see you. I know that you have been a longtime supporter. So thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, right, right, right. Okay. <laughs> someone is saying um sorry not, not i shouldn't say someone honeycomb 3688a is saying sing it sis yeah <laughs> guys so if you've got your wine you've got your champagne you've got your water you've got your juice i don't know i just want you guys to raise your glass and yeah this is to you guys out there as well you know, those of you guys who are, you know, um, planning towards coming to the motherland, I'm, you know, ho wishing you guys all the best with your planning. Um, don't get discouraged. Don't get discouraged because there will be things along the journey that just discourages you. Um, but just keep positive, keep motivated. 
And as for me, I am just looking forward to bigger and better things um, here in Rwanda, as well as I'm, I'm hoping for more growth here on the channel. So yeah, cheers to, to positivity and to more greatness, uh, both in my life and in yours, for those of you guys who are listening. So let's drink to that. So yeah, guys, do you have any questions? I'm not on here for too long because it has been a long day and my eyes may look a little bit red because, yeah, it has been a long day. I have been up very early this morning. But if you guys have any questions for me, send me out your questions. Oh, here's, I've been saying that I'm going to send out the link. Um, let me send out the link for those of you guys who may be interested to come in and say hi. Uh, let's see. Right, 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 right. I've sent out the link, guys. So anybody who wants to come in, I promise I don't buy it. Come and say hello. <laughs> come and say hi, guys. Come and say hi. <laughs> anyway, come and say hi. And, or if you have any questions, do send out your questions in the comment section. I'm here for you guys. I'm here for you guys. So for those of you guys who are thinking about relocating or investing in Rwanda and, you know, you want some information that you haven't already gained and you want some insight because, you know, Lady Visionary is here on the ground and I can I can give you a lot of the information that you may need. Please consider booking a consultation with me. Um, we normally do this via Zoom for an hour, an hour and a half. Um just send me an email all the details are down below in the description bar and remember it is at a cost it is at a, an affordable cost um, because I want more of you guys to take advantage of this um, I believe that when you are well informed you can make better decisions about the direction you would like to take so do consider a consultation and also um, booking a consultation also helps um, also helps with facilitating and supporting my projects here in Rwanda. So do you consider that? And if you're not following me on Instagram, please do follow me on Instagram. Um, that's lady underscore visionary. And also um, my business Instagram, which is Twin Lakes Recreational Island. Yeah, guys. So what can I say? So update you guys as to what is happening right now. Um, you guys may have seen the recent video that I did on the diaspora building project. So um, that application is in process. So for those of you guys who don't know what the diaspora building project is, that is basically where I'm building um, homes for the diaspora. So everyone thinking about relocating and visiting Rwanda, um, you can come to the northern province and you have a place to stay for up to one month, absolutely nothing absolutely free the only catch is that you have to pay for your utilities such as gas electricity water okay um for that particular project i am appealing for investors so if you think that this is something that you may want to invest in then all you have to do is send me an email send me an email at projecthealtha at gmail.com and then i'll give you more de details about the diaspora building project and the type of investment that is required and you kind of look at that and, and see whether it's something that's doable for you but um yeah so for that project i am looking for investors um yeah and i was like i love to start building by the end of december slash beginning of january 2022 my god the year is almost over it's crazy and covid is still here like crazy absolutely crazy um yeah i'm waiting for you guys if you have any questions do let me know i have sent out the link in the description in the comment section sorry so if you would like to come in and add something or you just want to come and say hi then you can go ahead and do so you don't have to be on video if you don't want to you can actually um disable the video um the video setting so that you know your voice just projects through so don't be afraid to click on the link and come in and talk to me because I'd love this to be interactive because if I'm just like talking, I'm like, OK, <laughs> I feel like I'm just talking to myself. So then I'll be like, guys, all right, then 
you know, see you later. But um, yeah, so um, that's that with the, the diaspora building project, um, which is in Rwanda, Mosanze area. Um, those of you guys, you know that I have a farm running at the moment. Um, I have cows, goats, sheep, rabbits, chickens. What else do I have? Yeah, and I have dogs as well to protect my investments. I have my dog. Like, I'm not a dog fan, guys, but I have two dogs on the farm to protect my investments because, like, these people, they're not keen um, with dogs, so helps to keep them away. Yeah, helps them keep them away. So, um, again, yeah, if anybody wants to support me with the farm, you can do. It's not an investment. It's just if you want to support. I've had people support, like, with buying chickens, rabbits, goats. <clears throat> Nobody has um, supported with a cow. Although a cow, like, a, a full-grown cow can cost, like, 500 yeah, 500 US dollars. So, yeah, the farm is going good. The animals are doing well. Um, yeah, recently I was on the farm. If you guys are following me on Instagram, I went on the farm and I was feeling a bit peckish. And um, I had eggs on the farm. So I was like, boil the eggs. So, um, boil the eggs. They're going in my tummy. So it's just amazing because with a farm, you can never, re you can never starve, really. You can never starve. So... That's great. Um, oh, on the farm we had two new births. So, so okay. So one mother goat <laughs> gave birth to two babies, and I went up there to see them, making sure that they're healthy, just in case I need to call the vet on site and everything like that. But everything looked really, really nice. Everything looked really good. The farm is growing. Things are expanding. Oh yeah, and recently I bought. Well, I say I bought, or my husband bought. <laughs> Like, around these people are obsessed with cows, guys. Like, obsessed with cows. My my husband would be like, I saw this beautiful cow. Like, what do you think? And I'd be like, no, not another cow. We have enough cows. Like, no more cows. <laughs> so, yeah, they're really, like, cows is a big, big thing here in Rwanda. So, yeah, recently we bought a bull um, because we were having issues with, like, I guess we, we were, like, having issues with um, our cows getting pregnant. So we just... We just bought a bull, so yeah, hopefully that will help things, you know, going. Um, we're having fresh, fresh milk from the farm. Like, like I don't have to buy any milk. Like the milk is coming in large quantities. My my children love the milk. Um, today I was drinking tea. The milk was from my cows. Yeah, and I have goats, so if I want to make um curry goat or if I want to make um beef I mean goat brochettes I just go to my farm and select a goat like it feels great guys it feels absolutely amazing it feels really really great um so yeah the farm is doing well we're expanding bit by bit as I mean the other animals are producing so everything is looking good and we have like a good management in place so things are looking up things are progressing yeah, and then we the final major project, I guess, is the is the um, the hotel project that I want to that we're in process uh, of, of you know we're in process of developing. So that's at Lake Brera um, here in the northern province of Rwanda. So again, things are looking positive. I haven't shared much about what's going on behind the scenes because I really want it to be a surprise. And um, I can't wait for you guys to see, like, what I've been doing behind the scenes. You guys are going to be like, what, Lady Visionary? Like, what? This is big. Like, the people who have come and seen um, things in progress have been like, wow. Like, you know, this is really amazing. And, yeah, I can't wait to show it to the rest of the world. I can't wait to show it to you guys. But you have to be patient. Um, everything happens in due course. Everything happens when it when it's supposed to happen so do bear with me the the hotel project is pretty much still in the pipeline and there's progress being made behind the scenes and i cannot wait for you guys to see what i've been working on like all this time 
Yeah, so thank you again, guys, for being in the building. You could be anywhere else, but you've chosen to be with me. We're celebrating 6K subscribers. I mean, I should have had, like, some music in the background and, you know, be dancing. But, guys, really, I'm, I'm dancing. I'm really dancing. Thank you so much <laughs> to each and every one of you guys who are subscribed to my channel. I really appreciate it. Okay. Um, we have Natasha Mohammed in the building. Hey, lady. Happy for and so happy for and proud of you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Oh, the love, guys. You guys are unreal. Um, okay. Flying to see my granddaughter next week for her birthday. We will make another congratulations video. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Guys, have you already smashed the like button? Please consider supporting, whether that be pay, um, by PayPal or Super Chat. Again, I just want to say thank you to Daniel and Lena for sending me out for lunch today. Well, yeah, sending me out for lunch. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I did go out for lunch. So that video of me out for lunch is up on the channel. And I did take along my two boys, my two very interesting boys and my PA um yeah so we we went out and we had lunch and we had a fantastic time and yeah so thank you so much to Daniel and Lena much appreciated okay like okay hello honeycomb 368 how are you <laughs> I'm well can you hear me oh I can hear you perfect can you hear me Okay. Yes, I can yes, hear you. Perfect. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> my, I appreciate my that. How are you? Body, right. I think there's a delay on your end. Now. So, I think uh, there's an issue on your end. So. I think there's an issue for you from your end. So maybe if you can try can reconnecting um, or tr yeah, trying to come back in, that would be great and seeing whether that would be all right. Okay, um, Natasha Mohammed is saying, and I love your Bantu knot. Hair is always gorgeous. Oh, thank you, I try. Like, I had it in an afro actually. I took it out, of, I had it in braids and I took it out and I had it in afro. And like my hair just shrunk so much and got really matted. And then I was supposed to go to hairdressers and I was like, I don't really want anybody in my head right now. So let me just do my hair myself. And so that's what I did. I did my hair myself. Like I'm the type of person, guys, I believe like whatever I put my mind to, I can do it. So even when I was thinking about doing my hair, I was like, oh my God, like really? And then I was like, come on, girl, you can do this. And I got it done within an hour. Like, got it done within an hour. So, yeah, I believe, like, whatever I put my mind to, um, I, can, I can really do that. Like, even recently, guys, I have started baking because my youngest son, who's two years old, he, he just turned two in July. And he just kept saying, I want cake, mommy. I want cake, mommy. I want kids like from his birthday where like he's just operating with that level of awareness and since his birthday and like having all the attention on him he's just been like obviously I bought him a cake for his birthday he's just been on and on about cake 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 so then I was like maybe it's time for me to get baking and so I've been baking guys like I've made um um is it nutty carrot cake so that's like um peanuts with um carrot like grounded peanuts with um carrot and um, I've made yeah just the plain carrot cake uh, I've made made banana cake and I've made planting cake guys and so far so good I'm really impressed with myself right now that's what I say guys I really believe that anything that I put my mind to and of course you have YouTube the, the, the internet world where you know you can just put in a little search and it just pops up like so many different people pop up in ways in which you can do this and that and then. so um you know youtube has been obviously a great tool
for me learning new skills as well because like yeah so my son is like bought out my two-year-old has bought out something within me that yeah I just didn't know like yeah and I enjoy it I enjoy it I enjoy it and the funny thing is when um my two-year-old knows when I'm baking a cake and he's already in the kitchen like I've put I've just put the ingredient I've just put the tray in the oven and then he's like my cake mommy my cake and I'm like well, you're going to have to wait another 40 minutes for this to be done. Um, but yeah, I'm baking now, guys. I'm baking on a weekly basis now. And, you know, that way I also know what's in what's in the cake and what my kids are eating. Um, so that's great. That's great. You know, your kids can bring out a lot within you. Like, it's crazy. Natasha Mohammed is saying um okay so I read that comment before sorry Titus is in the building Titus I'm proud of you lady visionary for taking that step and relocating how do we convince our African ladies who seem to get confident comfortable here in the west to see the opportunities in the motherland right oh sorry ah uh, I was I don't know can you come back in sorry I know you were waiting but I was just about uh, we had a guest and we're just about to you know, bring you in and then you came off. Oh my God. I think um, that question, um, how do we convince our African ladies who seem to get comfortable here in the West to see the opportunities in the motherland? Um, it's, con it's about constantly educating people, sharing out videos like mine. You've got Wadamaya, Unapologetic Nomad. You've got so many people who are giving information um, and sharing their stories. Um, about their journeys on the motherland. So I think that's what we can keep on doing because um, there's still a lot of um, learning that needs to happen amongst the black community, um, you know, for, for, for there to be real transformation. It's happening, it's happening slowly, but it's definitely happening, okay? <laughs> Natasha Mohammed saying, gotta run, but, Cheers to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we had a guest in the back. If you can come back in, that'd be great. Um, we're here for another couple of minutes. Should I say five, ten minutes? And then I'll be off, guys. I'm going to go off and get some beauty sleep. Um, Honeycomb 368A saying, my internet is spotty. I'll see if I can jump on next time when internet is better. Blessings to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. For those of you guys that are coming, just coming in, this is a 6K subscriber celebration live. You guys have the opportunity to ask me anything. I've been talking about, you know, my purpose here as well as my projects that I'm doing here in Rwanda. Um, what next? What next, guys? What next is just, can I say what next is, like, my projects are ongoing. So it's just continuing to work towards, achieving with regards to the projects that I'm doing here and also um, showing people that anything is possible once you put your mind to it and also just like you know you guys your support you have really brought my channel to where it is right now those of you guys who make like donations who share my videos you know, that, you know, just like my videos and helping it to gain a va um, visibility so that others can know about what I'm doing. So many people have been inspired by my channel. I've met quite a few of my subscribers who've come to Rwanda and come to visit me here in Musanze and um, actually booked the meetup tour in Musanze. So I, that's where I take you to, oh yeah, you get to get to, you know, explore a bit of real estate here in Musanze. I take you down to the lakes. That's Lake Hondo and Lake Brera. We do, we do a boat tour. And then I take you to Giseni by um, Congo. And we chill by the lake. And yeah, it's just a beautiful, beautiful time. I get to know you. You get to know me um, and everything that I'm doing. You get to visit also my projects and what I'm doing here on the ground. So that's been really, really great, had some very, very positive feedback with regards to my subscribers who've actually come here and seen me on the ground, which is just amazing because, you know, as a YouTuber content creator, you're giving information and inspiring others. But for me, I also gain ex ex um, inspiration from my subscribers 
like, you know, I'm, whether it may be like I'm having a down time, um, you know, having a challenging time, I may just read a comment or get an email from someone and I'm like, ah, Lady Visionary, I know this is tough, but you got to keep going, you know. Um, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, one, sorry, one way travel is asking about the tour, the price. Please send me an email if that's something that you're interested in. It's very, very affordable. And as I said, um, whenever someone books one of my services, it's helping towards the greater cause, okay? It's helping towards the greater cause. So, yeah, send me an email and we can, if that's something that you're interested in, then we can definitely um, make that happen, definitely. Because I always say, don't just focus on Kigali, like come and explore the Northern province. There's so much to see. And also when you, when you have a broadest perspective, uh, you know, you've seen Kigali, you've seen other parts of Mosanze or other parts of Rwanda, then you, you're like, right, okay, you know how you can best position. Um, I think that exposure is quite important. Yeah. So yeah, if you're considering one way, if you're considering um, doing the meetup tour, then send me an email, projecthealtha at gmail.com. Just send me an email and we can we can discuss. Okay. And again, for those of you guys who may be interested in the relocation and business consultation, again, that's the same email, projecthealtha at gmail.com. Yeah, thank you so much. Any other questions, guys? Do you have any questions for me? Again, uh, one more opportunity for anybody who wants to come and, you know, say a few words, add something to the conversation. Otherwise, guys, I will be loving you guys and leaving you guys shortly. So I've just sent out the link. Just sent out the link. And if you, you have not already done so, make sure you like the live stream. I'm on Instagram as lady underscore visionary. I've also, I also have a business Instagram, which is Twin Lakes Recreational Island, because I'm working on a hotel project here in the northern province of Rwanda. I'm here, so I'm like, instead of doing it small, let's just do it big. Let's just go all out, you know. I only live once, you know, and I, I'm in a position where, yeah, I can go at it with full force. So why not? Why not? Yeah. So again, guys, while I'm waiting, if anybody has any questions or, you know, um, you want to come in and talk to me or you can ask your question, question by clicking on the, the link to come in live. You don't have to be on video. You can just project your voice and that would be adequate enough. Um, I spoke about the Diaspora Building Project and I am looking for investors as well as anybody who wants to donate towards the Diaspora Building Project. Um, again, you can support. All the information is down below in the description box. Whether you want to make a donation towards the project, the building project, um, or whether you want to um, become an investor on the project. So that opportunity is there for any of you guys. Um, all you have to do is send me an email so I can give you a bit more detail regarding the diaspora building project so yeah guys it's been lovely it's been really nice um you know like where am i now so we're in what october november december like oh my god that like this year has gone by so quickly like, wow okay guys um i just want to say <laughs> Thank you so much for each and every one of you guys who have tuned into the live. Um, was not expecting that. Was not expecting that because if I could see it in the back office, then I would have not brought that person in. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate all the love and support. And um, fortunately, this live will not be staying up or maybe I have to go in the back office and see if I can edit this video. Um, and edit that section out of it but guys thank you so much and yeah just thank you for the ongoing love and support I really appreciate it and make sure you share um, you know make sure you share one of my one of your favorite um, videos on 
on YouTube, on your YouTube channel, on Twitter, on Instagram. That's the way that we um, gain more and more exposure. So thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next one.